The first section in the instructions is to prepare the fabrics. There are a lot of pieces in this pattern, but it's important to take the time and interface your fabrics and make sure they're all stabilized because after you spend all the time sewing and cutting out the pieces, you want to make sure that you have a nice sturdy bag. So first you're going to take your crossbody strap connector piece. You'll have one 3 by 6 inch piece and then you'll take four of your handle connectors. They're 3 inches by 9 inches and you're simply going to fuse some interfacing to the wrong side of each piece. And I recommend using a lightweight woven interfacing. The woven interfacing behaves well with woven fabric. If you use a non-woven interfacing, it tends to crack and behave more like paper. So then your fabrics will be more wrinkled. So I definitely choose to go with a woven interfacing. And you'll just follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to fuse it to the wrong side. And I like to use Bozal Fashion Fuse. It's a great all-purpose lightweight interfacing for interfacing your fabrics for your bag making. Next you're going to center and fuse your interfacing to the wrong side of coordinating crossbody strap piece. And I cut mine wider since I'm using a lighter weight fabric, but in the pattern you'll cut yours three inches wide. So you're going to just center it and fuse it on along the entire length of the crossbody strap. You'll notice that there's a half of an inch that doesn't have any interfacing on both short ends of the crossbody strap and that is for a reason. So you'll just make sure that it's centered and you have about a half of an inch without any interfacing on the end. You'll also fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the suitcase strap and this piece is optional. If you don't want to add a suitcase strap to your bag, that's okay. I'm going to add one to mine and show you how to do it. And then you'll also center and fuse the interfacing on your handle pieces. And on these pieces you'll notice that there is also a half inch on interfaced on the end. So you can set the handles and the suitcase strap aside. For the crossbody strap, right away you're going to want to press that uninterfaced edge to the wrong side. So you're just going to press the piece that doesn't have any interfacing on the end, a half inch to the wrong side. So we're going to have that folded edge on both of the short ends. So you'll do that for both sides of the crossbody strap. Next, you're going to center and fuse the Peltex to the wrong side of the contrast train case panel and also the back panel for the train case, both out of your contrasting fabric. And you can fuse the Peltex or you could use Craftex to the wrong side or you could use a double sided basting tape or a glue to hold it in place. Basically you just want to make sure that it's centered on all the edges and that it doesn't move around. Next you're going to fuse the foam interfacing to the wrong side of each of the coordinating pieces. So if you're using a fusible foam, you can just fuse it directly to the wrong side. I chose to use a sew-in foam, and if you use a sew-in foam, then you'll just top stitch the foam to the wrong side with 1 8 inch seam allowance, or you could use a zigzag stitch. So here's what it looks like on the back side. Generally, I like to use sew-in foam because if you use the fusible, when you turn your bag right side out, it's more difficult to get the wrinkles out. Whereas if you use the sew-in, you can just steam your bag and the wrinkles come out much easier. So I always tend to use the sew-in foam. So you're going to attach it to both of your front and your back panel pieces. Your contrast base piece. Each of your main fabric zipper panels. Both of the side panels out of your main fabric. You'll take that train case panel from before and you're going to place the foam directly over the Peltex. And then you're going to either fuse it or top stitch around the outsides to attach the foam to this piece because we want a lot of stability to the train case. And lastly, also the train case back panel. 
So you'll do the same thing. You'll fuse the foam or you'll top stitch it to the wrong side directly over the Peltex. You're going to start by preparing your zipper and you're going to need a 24 inch or longer double slide zipper. So a double slide zipper is where the pulls meet in the middle and then they open outwards. So this is more of a luggage style zipper that we want for our travel bag. And I'm using Sally Tomato Zippers by the Yard. What's unique about this zipper is you can make any length of zipper that you need. So I cut mine exactly the size that I need. And also the coil is nylon with a metallic finish. So this appears to be a metal coil, but it's actually not. So it's safe to cut and sew directly over the zipper coil, but it looks like metal. So this is a fun option so you can match the coil color to your hardware. And then I matched the tape color to the fabrics that I'm doing. So it has a more professional touch to your project. So I already went ahead and prepared my zipper. If you'd like to learn how to use Zipper by the Yard, I have lots of tutorials on our Sally Tomato YouTube channel. So check that out to learn how to make a double slide zipper and use Zipper by the Yard. So like I said, my zipper is already prepared. You're going to start by taking one of your exterior zipper panels and you're going to place your zipper right sides together with the exterior panel along one of the long edges. And you're going to want to zip both of the pulls nearly to the end of the zipper. And the purpose of this is so that way we can keep them off of our fabric so they can hang off the edge. Then when we go to sew the zipper in place, we don't have to ever worry about moving our pulls or hitting them with our needle because they're completely out of the way. So you'll line up your zipper tape along that top edge of the exterior panel. So you have it right sides together. Then you're going to layer one of your lining zipper panel pieces on top of the zipper and both of your fabrics will be right sides together. So your lining and your exterior fabric will be right sides together with the zipper sandwiched in between. And you can take some wonder clips to hold it in place. Make sure that those top edges are even and then also the side edges are even as well. And I like to use some wonder clips to hold the layers together for bag making, especially when we're working with the foam stabilizer too, just because it helps compress the foam. So once you sew and get to one of your clips, it's a little bit easier to go over the foam. And then also it just holds the layers together a lot better than pins would. Sometimes when we're working with thickness, the pins would bend where these clips are just super easy to pop on and off. So then you'll take this over to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch them together with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance along this top edge. And for this step, I recommend using a zipper foot. It's a little bit easier to maintain your seam allowance and get nice and close to the zipper coil. You could also use a narrow foot if you have one for your sewing machine. I'm going to be making this entire bag using the Baby Lock Accomplish. This is the machine that I sew on every day and I use to design my patterns. It's a straight stitch only machine, but it's super powerful at what it does. It's great at going through thickness. So for my machine, I bought a narrow foot and I love using this foot for doing top stitching and piecing. So I'm going to keep this foot on my machine for the entire project. Next, you're going to fold away the lining and the exterior fabric from the zipper. So now the zipper is on the top edge of our project. And you can take this over to your iron and use some steam to help relax the foam. And give it a good press to make sure that the lining stays flat. So this is what it'll look like on the wrong side. And make sure that the lower raw edge of the lining is even with the foam and the exterior piece make sure everything is nice and tight. 
So then once you have that pressed, you can take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch along the seam that we just made with 1 8 inch seam allowance. Next, we're going to repeat the same steps to attach the remaining exterior zipper panel and lining zipper panel to the opposite side of the zipper. Just make sure that you align those side edges. So first, I'm going to take my exterior panel and place my zipper right sides together. Align that top raw edge. And then I'm going to layer a lining zipper panel on top. Clip these together and sew along the top with 3 8 inch seam allowance. After that, I'll fold away the lining in the exterior from the zipper and then do the top stitching just as before. So here's what the zipper panel looks like with both of the panels attached. So this is the exterior side and here is the lining side. So next we're going to trim up our zipper so it measures 7 inches wide. So this measurement here should be 7 inches. And the reason why I have to make it a little bit bigger and then trim is because you might be using a different zipper than mine that has a different width of zipper tape or depending on your seam allowances, if how accurate they were, sometimes things just shift on their own and it's nice to trim up afterwards so we have it perfect. So this would be really easy if we took it over to our rotary cutter and mat and we can just trim off the length side edges. And if you do that, you can take your ruler and since we need it to measure seven inches, half of that is three and a half, so you would align the three and a half inch mark on your ruler along the zipper and then you can just cut with your rotary cutter along one side and then measure from the cut side over to the seven inches and then you'd cut so that way you have a perfect seven inch piece with your zipper tape centered exactly in the middle. So I'm just going to use my ruler and my marking pen and measure three and a half inches from the center of the zipper coil and mark across. And I'm gonna do this all the way down the strip and then I'll cut one side, then I'll measure from this side over seven inches and I'll cut the other side. So after you have it trimmed, then you can slide the zipper poles into the middle and take your scissors and trim off the excess zipper tape so it's even with a side edge. So we can set this piece aside for later and we'll move on to making the strap connectors. So take your strap connectors piece. So you have one piece and we're going to turn this into two strap connectors. So you're going to fold each of the longer edges to meet in the middle on the wrong side. So you're going to iron it wrong sides together. I've already went ahead and pressed mine. And then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch a quarter inch in from each of the folded edges. So here's what your connector should look like after top stitching. Then we're going to fold it in half matching the short edges and cut along the fold to make two pieces. So now you have one strap connector for each side of your bag. Next you're going to take two inch and a half D rings or triangle rings. 
I'm going to use triangle rings and you're going to slide it through the flat side of the hardware and fold the connector in half with wrong sides together. Then you're going to top stitch about 3 eighths of an inch or a half inch away from this folded edge so that way it keeps your hardware from sliding down and moving. So you'll do that for both pieces. I'm just going to put a clip in mine for the moment. Then you're going to take your zipper panel and you're going to position one strap connector centered on the short edge centered over the zipper. And you're just going to top stitch this raw edge in place and you'll add one on each short end of the zipper panel. Now we're ready to attach the side panels. So start by taking one of your exterior side panel pieces and you're going to measure in a half inch along one of the seven inch sides and put a mark. So you'll measure in a half inch on both of the edges. So I already went ahead and I made my marks. Then with exterior fabrics together, you're going to align the seven inch sides of the zipper panel with the side panel. Then you'll take one of your lining side panel pieces and you're going to place the right sides of the lining together. So make sure that your zipper panel lining is flat and you'll place those right sides together along the 7 inch line as well. So make sure all those edges are even. And I'm going to add a few clips to hold the layers together. And you'll repeat for the other side. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and you'll start and stop sewing at the half inch marks with 3 8 inch seam allowance. So you're only going to sew in between the marks that you made. Next, you'll fold away both of the side panel pieces, so they'll be wrong sides together now. And you'll top stitch along the seam, starting and stopping a half inch from each of the side edges again. And you'll repeat for the opposite side. Once you have that done, you'll take the entire zipper panel and fold it in half and match the short edges. and you can match the seams and the short edges on the end and then you'll take a pen and you'll mark the center on both sides of the zipper panel. Once that is done, you can set that aside and we'll move on to the next step. Start by taking the front pocket accent and fold it in half along the length with wrong sides together. You'll take this over to your iron and give it a good press. So now the piece should measure 7 inches wide by 3 quarters of an inch high. Then you're going to take one of your front pocket pieces and you're going to align the raw edges of the accent strip along the top 7 inch edge of the pocket piece. And make sure the side edges are aligned as well. And then you'll take the remaining front pocket piece and place it right sides together layering it over the accent and align all the edges. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch the accent in place with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. After sewing, you'll fold away the front pocket so it's right sides out and then this accent strip will be along the top edge. And you'll take this over to the iron and give it a good press. And then you'll top stitch along the seam that you just made with a quarter inch seam allowance. Take 
take your exterior front panel and position the front pocket along the bottom edge and you're going to center it. And if you'd like, you can use the template included in the instructions. There's a placement line for the front pocket as well as the handle connectors. So you can position that on your piece and then make sure that it's aligned. I'm just going to center mine and then you'll top stitch the sides and the bottom edge in place with an eighth inch seam allowance. After you have the pocket top stitched, you can set this piece aside for the moment. Next, you're gonna take all four of your handle connector pieces. I'm just gonna show you one for now. So the top edge measures three inches wide. You're gonna take your ruler and measure in three eighths of an inch from each of the side edges and make a mark. Then you're gonna measure down from the top edge an inch and a half. You'll have those marks and you'll connect the inch and a half mark with the nearest three eighths of an inch mark to make a diagonal line. And then you'll repeat for the other side. So what we're doing here is we're going to be creating a tapered end and this will help reduce bulk and will also conceal the raw edges of the handle later on so it looks a lot more professional and is a lot more sturdy. So once you have those lines marked, you can cut along the diagonal lines. So remember that this is our top edge with the tapered ends. Then you can apply double-sided tape or some fabric glue down the center of the handle if you'd like, and that'll help for the next step. Otherwise, you can just use your iron. What we're gonna be doing is folding each of the long edges to the center, and they're just gonna meet in the middle. So you're just gonna match them up in the middle along the entire length of the handle. Then for this top tapered end piece, you'll meet those raw edges in the middle as well. So there'll be a little bit of overlap, about an inch and a half down, and that's okay. And then you'll take this over to your iron and give it a good press. So here's what it'll look like pressed. Then you're gonna take an inch and a half rectangle ring and slide it over the top edge of the handle connector. Then you're gonna fold this top raw edge two inches to the wrong side. So from the fold to the raw edge should be about two inches. I'm just gonna take my ruler and double check. And I'm just gonna use some Wonder Clips to hold the folds in place. Then you can apply some double-sided tape or glue down the center if you'd like, or you can use pins, it's up to you. And we're gonna take our exterior front panel and you're going to center the connector over the side edge of the pocket. Otherwise, it'll be along that placement line on the pattern piece. So I'm just gonna center my handle on the edge of my pocket piece and you're gonna align those raw edges on the bottom. So you can use some pins to hold this in place or if you wanted to use some wonder tape, you can just press it down to adhere it in place. Then you'll take this over to the sewing machine and you'll top stitch starting along one of the sides with the eighth inch seam allowance. You'll stop about a half inch from that top folded edge so you don't hit the hardware and sew across and then you'll continue down the opposite side with the eighth inch top stitching to secure the handle connector in place. So then you'll repeat for the other side and then also the remaining two handle connectors and the exterior back panel.
Here I have the handle connectors attached to the front as well as the back panels. So one last step is to fold the back and the front in half and mark the center top and bottom edge. So then you'll repeat to find the top and bottom center of the front panel and you can set these pieces aside for now. This section of the instructions is optional. If you'd like, you can add a suitcase strap to the back of your bag so that way you can slide it over the handle of your suitcase and it won't fall off the top of your suitcase as you're traveling. So it's just kind of a fun added bonus. So if you'd like to make the suitcase strap, first you're going to fold each of the length sides with wrong sides together to the middle and you'll give it a good press over at the iron and they should meet in the middle otherwise you can just fold it along the edge of the interfacing because the interfacing will be the finished size so give that a good press and then you'll fold it in half again with wrong sides together and match those folded edges and give it a good press then you'll take it over to the sewing machine, top stitch both of the length sides a quarter inch from the edge. After you have the suitcase strap top stitched, then you're going to position it so the length is parallel with the bottom edge of the back. And I've already measured and positioned it in place, so you'll want to center it on the back and measure four inches up from the bottom edge. And then I just added a few wonder clips to hold it in place on the sides. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and you'll follow the curved edge of the exterior panel. And you're just going to top stitch it in place with a quarter inch seam on both sides just to tack down the very edges. So then when you go to use it, your handle of your suitcase will slide underneath and prevent your bag from falling off. So after you have both sides top stitched, then you can trim the edges of the strap even with the raw edge and with the curve of the back panel. Next I'm going to show you how to create the patch pocket for the lining. So you're going to take your lining piece, it's a 10 by 10 square, and you're going to fold it in half with right sides together and you're going to align the bottom and the side edges and you can clip this together or use some pins to hold it together and you're going to sew the sides and the bottom edge leaving three inches unsewn along this bottom edge so you'll start up here you'll sew down the side make sure you backstitch somewhere on the bottom skip about three inches and then you'll start again make sure you backstitch and then continue up the opposite side so this unsewn edge will be for turning the pocket right side out. Here's what the pocket will look like after sewing. Then we're going to trim the corners and only the side seam allowance to a quarter of an inch wide. We're not going to trim the bottom at all because it'll be easier to close up this turning opening with a full seam allowance. So now we can turn the pocket right side out. I'm just going to take my scissors and just carefully poke the corners so that way the corners are out. Just be careful that you don't poke through the seam at all. It would be better to use a point turner or something that is meant to poke out the corners, but I'm just using my scissors because it's handy. And one trick to get nice points on the corners of pockets and um, things is to take your tool that you're using and to push it along the outer edges of the seams that are nearby and then it'll help roll out 
that corner and let it lie a little bit smoother and flatter. So then you'll tuck the raw edges of the opening inside, so just make sure they're tucked in the wrong side. And you can take this over to the iron and give it a good press so everything lays nice and flat. And you'll want to make sure that those folded edges of the opening are even. You don't want to be one folded more than the other. Then you're going to top stitch the folded edge with either an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch seam allowance, whichever you'd like. After you top stitch the patch pocket, take one of your lining pieces and you're going to center the patch pocket on the lining piece with right sides up and it will be about one inch up from the bottom edge. So you can pin this in place. Then you're going to top stitch the patch pocket in place with 1 8 inch seam allowance going down the sides and the bottom edge and then you're going to stitch a second line a quarter inch in from the first line of top stitching. So then you'll go around one more time. So doing these two lines of top stitching is a little bit more decorative but then it also seals up this bottom turning hole and make sure that that doesn't come undone. Also if you'd like you could stitch a vertical line up the center of the pocket and that will divide your pocket into two compartments if you'd like. It's up to you. The last step in preparing the lining is to fold each of the lining pieces in half and mark the top and the bottom center points. So then you'll repeat for the opposite lining piece and you can set these aside for the moment. Start by taking one of your lining pieces and your assembled zipper panel and with right sides together you're going to match those top center points that we marked earlier and put a pin to hold the layers together. Then you're going to continue pinning the lining piece to the lining of the zipper panel. So make sure that you're only pinning the linings together. You don't want to catch any of the foam or the exterior fabric. Also these bottom corners of the lining should also be even with the bottom corners of the zipper panel. So that is why earlier we did not sew through the entire side panel so that way we can just move the lining away and just pin together the lining pieces. So I'm going to start by pinning the top center and then the bottom sides together and then ease in the rest in between. So here's what it'll look like once one half of the lining is pinned and we're only going to attach one half of the lining at a time. So now we'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew the lining to the zipper panel with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and I find it's easier to do this step with the lining piece against the bed of the sewing machine.
So here's what the lining will look like. So just double check that you didn't catch any of the foam or the exterior fabric. So then we'll attach the opposite side of the lining to the opposite side of the zipper panel in the exact same way. Now that we have both lining pieces attached, you'll notice that the lining is finished off on the inside with no raw edges. And I wouldn't recommend to trim any of the seam allowance for the lining or for the exterior of this section. So that way you have the full seam allowance. It adds support and structure to the curve. So now we're gonna attach the front and back exterior panels in the exact same way that we attach the lining panels. So in order to do this, it's a little bit easier to unzip the zippers. It'll just make the bag a little bit more flexible and easy to work with. So I'm gonna start by attaching the front panel. So you can attach it to either side. Again, you're gonna match up those center points. And then I recommend to match up the bottom edges and clip those. So here's what it'll look like clipped. Just remember that you don't want any of the lining clipped in, so we're just going to be sewing the exterior fabric and the foam together. So as you sew, make sure that you move the lining out of the way. And feel free to fold it completely out of the way as you sew because we can always arrange it back into place after we're done sewing. So to me, it's easiest to sew with that flat side again, so the, the front piece against the bed of the sewing machine. So we'll start sewing here and we'll go all the way around the curve. So here is the front side attached and you can look inside and feel around to make sure that you didn't miss any of the parts of the seam. So now we're going to attach the opposite side. So we're going to attach the back. So again, it's just going to be kind of awkward looking and you'll have to maneuver the fabric out of the way, but it will work to attach to the opposite side. So you're just going to have to tell the bag who's boss and move the fabric out of the way as you sew. So here's what the last side will look like. And again, you can just squish all of this out of the way. We're gonna start sewing here and then around the rest of the curve. So now we can turn the exterior right side out. So 
So this is what your bag should look like so far. So you have your lining attached, both of the exterior pieces, and the bottom edges of the exterior pieces and the lining are still raw. So the next step is to add a base onto the bottom of the top part, and then we'll work on the train case bottom after that. So you can set this top panel piece aside for the moment and we'll work on getting the base ready for this piece. Take one lining base and one Peltex base. You're gonna place the fusible side of the Peltex against the wrong side of the lining and center it on the lining piece. So there should be an equal amount of fabric around the outer edges. You'll fuse the Peltex in place and then you'll top stitch the Peltex a 3 8 inch seam allowance from the edge of the Peltex to top stitch it in place. And the reason that the Peltex is cut smaller is so that way when we go to sew this to the lining, then we don't have to worry about sewing through the thickness of the stabilizer. But the firmness of the stabilizer will help prevent the bottom of our bag from sagging over time. So it's important that it's there. So now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and do my top stitching. Make sure you have the center marks transferred from the pattern piece on all four sides of the lining base with the Peltex attached. Then you're going to take the top part of your bag and fold the exterior up out of the way. So that way the lining just hangs down on the bottom edge. So then you're going to match up the center points on the base with the center points of the lining and you're going to place the right sides of the lining fabric together and you're going to line up that long edge with the front and back panel of the lining piece. The shorter edges will line up with the side edges. So first match all of the center points and then ease in the rest. So here's what it should look like. I'll try my best to show you since the camera view isn't very large. So the entire bottom edge of the lining has been pinned to the lining base. And we're going to sew these together around the entire base with 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you're having trouble with sewing around the corners, you can take your scissors and cut little snips around the curved edges and that'll help relax the fabric. Just don't cut more than a quarter of an inch snip because you don't want it to go into the seam allowance.
The last step in this section is to push the lining up towards the exterior. So you're just going to push the base towards the top so that way the lining is out of the way and then you can fold the exterior fabric back down. So here's what it'll look like on the inside with the lining pushed up towards the top. So you'll just want to make sure it stays out of the way for the next section of instructions. I already have my double slide zipper prepared. You'll need a 38 inch or longer zipper. And again, just like before with the zipper panel, the zipper is longer so that way the pulls will hang off the edge of the fabric. So make sure you have both the poles zipped very close to one end of the zipper. And you're going to place it right sides together with the contrast train case bottom. And then you're going to take the lining train case panel and place it right sides together with your contrast fabric over the zipper. And you'll do this for the entire length of the panel. Then you're going to clip it together along this long top edge and you're going to sew it together with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now you're going to fold the lining fabric and the contrast fabric away from the zipper. And make sure that the lining fabric is even with the contrast fabric on the sides and along the entire bottom edge. So you can steam the seam to relax it and to relax the foam and help that lay flatter. And give it a good press over at your iron and align it down the entire length of the panel. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and you'll top stitch along the zipper seam with 1 8 inch seam allowance and then you'll also sew down both of the sides and along the bottom edge to tack the lining down in place. Slide both of your zipper pulls to the middle of the train case panel and you can leave the excess zipper tape for now. Take the train case back panel and you're going to place it right sides together with the contrast fabric and align the short edges. You'll also want to make sure that the top and bottom edges are even. Then you'll take the lining train case back panel and you're going to place it right sides together with the lining side and align those short edges. So make sure everything is even and then clip the layers together then you'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew the layers together with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance Now you can trim the excess zipper tape even with the side edge. Then fold away both of the back panels from the main train case panel and you'll top stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance along the seam that we just made. Now we'll repeat the same process to attach the opposite raw edges of the back panel to the opposite raw edges of the train case panel. So start by taking just the contrast back panel piece and you're going to match it right sides together with the opposite end. 
And I'm just going to add in a few clips to hold it in place. And now we need to match up the other side of the lining back panel piece. So we need to do right sides together. So this is the right side of the fabric and we need to match this raw edge all the way with the opposite raw edge here. So one tip is to roll the bottom panel and then you can take this back piece and match it really easily with the opposite, opposite edge. Now you can easily match the opposite raw edge together and you'll sew together with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, turn it right side out, and then top stitch that seam with a quarter inch seam allowance just like the other side. Here is what the train case panel looks like after top stitching the opposite side. I also went ahead and top stitched the lining in place on both of the longer edges of the back panel just to make sure everything stayed together nicely. So you should have a round tube for the train case bottom. Take the train case extension piece out of your lining fabric. This is a very long piece and it's two inches wide. You're going to match the two inch sides and you're going to sew it together with three eighths inch of a seam allowance and press the seam open to create a circle. So we're just making one big tubular piece. Next, take the train case bottom piece that we assembled earlier and you're going to fold it in half to mark the center on the top and the bottom edge. So match up the side seams from the back panel and you're going to mark the top and the bottom center points and then also the front center points. Then you're going to match the front and the back center points to find the side centers. Next, you're going to want to position the train case so that way the zipper is on the top edge. Then you'll take the train case extension piece that we just pieced together and you're going to match that seam that we had just sewn with the center back. You're going to place the lining fabrics right sides together and then the lining right side of the extension will match up with the wrong side of the zipper. So add some sewing clips all the way around to attach it in place. And the extension piece should fit perfectly around the top edge, but if it doesn't, if it's a little bit too big, you could always take in the seam allowance on the extension a little bit more. Or if it's too tight around the top edge, then you can take out some of the seam allowance to make it just a narrower seam allowance so it'll fit a little bit better around the top edge. So here's what it should look like. So you have right sides together along the top edge. You're going to sew it in place with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the top edge. Turn the train case so the lining side is face out.
then make sure that the zipper is at the top edge and you're going to insert the top of the bag inside the train case bottom. So that way the exterior and the contrast fabric is together. So the zipper edge should be along the bottom edge of the top portion of the bag. So I'm just going to turn it so you can see what it should look like. So here's the front of the bag. Here's the train case. Here's the bottom edge of the front of the bag. And then we have the zipper edge of the train case. So you'll want to match the zipper edge with the bottom edge of the top. So first you're going to want to match up your center points. And then you're going to clip in between all of the center marks. Now, before we sew this together, just double check that the back side of your bag that has the suitcase strap or it doesn't have a pocket on it is matched up with the back panel of the train case. You should also see the seam for the train case extension. And then just double check that the front side is attached to the zipper side of the train case piece. Okay, so we have our main fabric and our contrast fabrics together. The lining side is out. Then you'll take this over to the sewing machine and you'll sew around the entire train case bottom and top to attach them together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Next, you're going to fold the train case panel away from the top. It's really important to make sure that the extension piece stays flat against the train case. So make sure that you keep that flat. And we're going to top stitch along the seam that we just made with an eighth inch seam allowance. Next we're going to turn the bag so the extension is at the top and the right side of the extension is facing the inside. So to do that you're going to push this top part of the bag down and we're going to turn the bag so the wrong side is face out. Then we're going to turn the train case part up towards the top and fold it in. Leave the extension out. Now as you can see our extension piece has the right side towards the inside and we're going to turn it so it's at the top now. Then you're going to take one of your lining base pieces and you're going to mark the center front, back, and sides and then you'll also mark the center marks on the extension piece. I've already gone ahead and done that. Then we're going to place the base piece right sides together with the extension match up the center marks and pin all the way around. So once you have it pinned, you're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew the lining base piece to the extension with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around and you're going to leave about 8 inches unsewn on one of the longer sides 
for turning the project right side out. So make sure you that you backstitch wherever you start and you end. So when you turn your bag right side out, we don't rip through those stitches. One other tip, I found it's easiest to sew with this flat base piece against the bed of the sewing machine. So our extension corners are now curved. So if you have your base piece against the machine, you can kind of just squish all of this out of the way as you sew. Now we can turn the bag right side out through that unsewn edge. And before you turn it right side out completely, you can tuck the raw edges of this turning opening towards the inside. So you wanna fold about 3 8 of an inch in and you can line them up and pin and you can either hand sew this turning opening closed or you can take it over to your sewing machine and stitch it closed with the eighth of an inch seam allowance. Take the square of fabric that's going to be used for your bias binding and you're going to cut a diagonal line from corner to corner to divide the square into two triangles. Then you're going to take two of the opposite sides so I always do the right and the left and you're going to match them right sides together. So you're going to match the right side with the left side, having the fabrics right sides together. And you'll want about a quarter of an inch overhang of the triangle edge on each end. And that will account for our seam allowance. So you're going to sew with a quarter inch seam along this side match that we matched up both of those raw edges. And you're going to sew a quarter inch seam, and by having that overhang, then the edges of our fabric will line up after we press the seam open. So you'll do a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and then press your seam open. Next, you're going to open up your bias binding piece. So I've already went ahead and pressed my seam allowance open. And you're going to want to cut strips along the longer side. So here we have the shorter side which is the, sh the straight of grain and then our bias side is the longer edge of the triangle. So we're going to want to cut our strips going with the biased edge and you can just kind of stretch. You'll notice there's a lot of stretch on this raw edge and there's only just a little bit of stretch on this raw edge. So this is the bias edge here. So you can cut either two and a quarter inch wide strips or two and a half inch wide strips and you'll cut as many as you can along the bias edge. So if you like a really nice tight binding then cut two and a quarter. If you want to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, if you're new at bias binding then I'd recommend doing two and a half inch strips. So here I have my bias strips. Next, you're going to join each of the ends with right sides together and the raw edges on the ends will be perpendicular to each other. So you're going to place them right sides together and the way that I always remember how they go is I'll position them how I want my strip to look. So obviously this will need to be seamed here and the angles will be um, going the same direction. And then I turn one so it's right sides together with the other. And again you'll want about a quarter of an inch overhang on each corner and you're going to sew the strips together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then you'll press that seam open so you'll have joined two of your strips together and then you'll repeat to join these two strips as well. So you'll have one long strip of bias binding. So once that is done, your bias binding is prepped and you can set this aside for the moment. Take your contrast base 
and then also take your Peltex base and you're going to center the Peltex base on the wrong side of the contrast base and you're going to top stitch the Peltex in place all the way around. So I already went ahead and top stitched my Peltex in place. Then you're going to take your remaining lining base piece and you are going to place wrong sides together and cover up the Peltex and you're going to top stitch the lining in place a quarter of an inch all the way around to attach it to the contrast base. Next you're going to take your bag and unzip the train case bottom completely and you're going to turn it so the lining side is face out. Then you're going to take your assembled base piece that we have the contrast on one side and the lining fabric on the other. You're going to place your contrast fabrics together and you're going to first match up the center points. So if you haven't already, transfer those center marks on the front, back, and sides of the base. And you should already have them marked on the train case piece. So match those up first and then continue clipping all the way around to attach the base to the train case. So this is what it'll look like. So once you have it clipped all the way around, you're going to sew around the entire edge with a quarter inch seam allowance attaching the base to the train case. And again, it's a little bit easier to sew with the base against the bed of the sewing machine. So if you flip this around and you'll have the zipper side up and you can flatten this as you sew. So it's a little bit easier to do this step if you're using a zipper foot or a narrow foot to help maintain your seam allowance once you reach the corners. Once the base is attached, just feel around all the seams to make sure that you didn't miss any of the fabrics and just go back and restitch if you missed any places around the corners especially. So now we're ready to bind the bottom edge of the train case and that is the final step to complete our bag. Then we'll move on to working on the handles and the strap. So the hard part will be done after this. So you're going to take your bias binding that we prepped earlier and you're going to fold one of the angled edges a half inch to the wrong side and press and I'm just going to finger press it. And then take the scissors and trim that tail corner even with the side edge of the bias binding. Then you're going to fold the bias binding in half lengthwise and match those raw edges. And if you'd like, you can take this over to your iron and press the entire strap so the fold stays flat. Or you can take some pins and pin the bias binding so the fold stays in place. So I'm just going to clip mine to the train case bottom. So you're going to place the bias binding against the lining side of the train case panel. 
So I would start on either the front or the back long edges. You don't want to start on a corner or one of the shorter edges. And you can use some sewing clips to hold this in place. And you're going to start sewing about four inches from this top tail end. So four inches in, and this is where you'll start sewing. And you're going to attach the bias binding with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And then once we get closer to the beginning end, you're going to stop sewing and you'll trim the tail end of the binding so it tucks inside the beginning end and you'll want to trim it just before your, where you started sewing. And you'll tuck that in and then you can continue sewing to join the pieces of binding. And I'll show you how to do that. So first we're going to start by sewing a quarter inch. So all the way around and then stop sewing about an inch or two from the beginning tail end of the bias binding. I stopped sewing about two inches from the beginning end of the binding and now I'm just going to fold the binding down and take my scissors and I'm going to trim about an inch beyond that lower folded edge of the beginning end. And then I'm going to tuck that tail end of the binding inside the beginning end. And actually, even before I do that, I'm going to put a pin in the beginning end so it doesn't shift. Because when you go to sew, you might push this beginning end out of the way. So we want to make sure it stays in place. So I'm just going to add a pin. Now I'm going to tuck that tail end inside so the folds are flush and so are the raw edges. And then I'm just going to clip it in place. And then take this back over to the sewing machine and pick up where we left off and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure to back stitch and then continue sewing the remaining piece of the binding. So once that is done, then you can fold the binding over to the opposite side and then you're going to top stitch this folded edge down. So just make sure that your bag is out of the way and you're only sewing the binding down and you'll go around the corners and just make sure that your train case is tucked out of the way. You wouldn't want it to be flipped up so make sure it's pressed down and you'll fold all the binding over and top stitch one eighth inch from that folded edge. Fold over and top stitch one eighth inch from that folded edge. Here's what the train case bottom will look like with the binding attached. So once you have that completely bound, you can turn it right side out. And 
And then you can zip the bag up. And the portion of our bag is complete. So next we'll move on to preparing the handles and the crossbody strap. On both of your handle pieces, make sure that you press both of the short edges a half inch to the wrong side for both of your handle pieces. And you'll just take that over to your iron and press it down. Once you have that done, you're gonna take both of your handle pieces and you're gonna fold each of the length sides to the center and you'll press all the way down the entire length. And you'll repeat the same process for the accent. This time the short ends can be left raw edge. So you're just going to fold the length sides to the middle all the way down the entire length and press. And the same thing for the crossbody strap. So these we already pressed towards the wrong side. And you'll match the length edges to the center. So you'll do that for both handles, both handle accents, and your crossbody strap. After pressing, you're going to start with one handle and one accent. And we have them all pressed down the entire length so they're ready to go. And you're going to place the accent wrong sides together with the handle. So you're going to cover up those raw edges. And there should be about a half inch on each end where there isn't any accent of the handle. So that's just going to help reduce bulk later on and conceal that raw edge of the accent. So you'll see how that works in a later step. So you can add some pins or clips to hold these layers together. Or you could use some basting spray or basting tape and apply it along the entire length. And then you're going to top stitch both of the length sides with 3 8 inch seam allowance to attach the accent to the handle. And you'll repeat the same process for the remaining handle and accent. After you're done top stitching, you're going to fold each of the handles in half to find the center. And you can mark this with some chalk or a marking pen. I'm just going to put a pin in the center. Then open the handle back up and measure three inches away from each side of the center. Next you're going to fold the handle in half lengthwise with the accent towards the middle. I'm going to add a clip to hold the layers in place. You can take this center mark pin out for now. So then you're going to take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch an eighth of an inch from the folded edge between those three inch marks from the center. So you're going to sew a total of six inches and this will anchor down the center of the strap so it stays folded and then the ends of the handles will be flat so you'll still be able to see the accent. Um, the reason for doing this is that way when you're carrying it it's a little bit more comfortable and your handle doesn't get wrinkled when you're carrying it and it just looks a little bit more professional. So take this over to your sewing machine and repeat for the opposite handle. Now we're ready to attach the handles to the bag. So here's what our handle looks like after top stitching. Here's the top view and then the underside of the strap. So first start with the front of your bag. So that has the accent pocket on it. And take one of your handles and you're going to have the top side up and you're going to thread it through one of the rectangle rings and fold the strap onto itself so from the end to the fold is about one inch. I'm just going to clip it in place. Make sure your strap isn't twisted at all. And then you're going to thread it through the opposite rectangle. 
Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch each end of the handle in place. And you can just sew about an eighth of an inch from the end of the strap and then a quarter of an inch. So you can do two lines of stitching. Or if you'd like, you can sew a rectangle with an X in between for reinforcement. They each have a bit of a different look, so it's up to you how you want the top side of your handles to look. The last step is to finish up the crossbody strap. So after you have each of the link sides pressed to the center, you're going to fold the strap in half again with the raw edges in the middle and line up those folded edges and you can give it a good press and then you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and top stitch all four sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. I've went ahead and top stitched all four sides of my strap. Next you're going to take your slider buckle and you're going to have the right side face up, so that's the side that's smooth. The wrong side has the prongs folded to it. So have the right side up, and you're going to thread one end of your strap through the buckle from the underside, going over that center bar, and going back down. So then you're going to fold the strap back onto itself, so fold it towards the underside, and from the fold to the end of the strap should be about one inch or just enough room for you to sew the strap down. So then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch the end of strap in place with a quarter inch seam and then also a half inch seam from the end for reinforcement. So here we are all top stitched. So keep your thumb on the underside of the strap and follow it all the way down to the opposite end so that way you make sure your strap doesn't get twisted. Then you're going to take one of your swivel hooks and you're going to have the flat part of the swivel hook against the underside of the strap. Okay, And then you're going to take this end of the strap and fold it undersides together and move the swivel hook as you go and bring this raw end all the way down to the slider buckle. So just make sure that you have the undersides of the strap together. So now your hook will be against the top side. Then you're going to take that end and thread it back through the slider buckle just like before. So we're going to go from the underside over that center bar and back down the opposite side. Then you'll take your remaining swivel hook and the hook will go against the top side. So thread that end of the strap through the hook and fold the strap onto itself against the underside. It will measure about an inch from the fold to the end and you'll top stitch a quarter inch and a half inch again to hold your swivel hook in place. Finally, you can clip each of the swivel hooks onto opposite triangle rings to attach the crossbody strap. And your new travel bag is complete.